You, most people look at this book as a hindrance to their freedom. Most people look at the commands in the Bible as something that wants to ruin their good time. Many people look at God's Word as this archaic book that needs to be thrown out so that we can have the freedom that we, we could have without it. We'd finally be able to do what it is that we want. But there is no freedom without truth. I love John Piper's illustration of this principle. He said, most people would agree that one of the most free-feeling experiences can be free-falling or skydiving, right? I mean, you're jumping out of a plane. There's nothing holding you. You're just flying through the air. Probably a very freeing experience. You feel like, boy, this is living. But you know that before you can go skydiving, you have to take a class because you got to know how to operate the parachute. And you have to show up at the airport at a specific time so that you can catch the plane. And then when you jump out of the plane, you have to follow all these procedures. Now, imagine if you wanted to go skydiving, the guy said, okay, great. Tomorrow, be here at 8 a.m. We're going to do the class. And then on Saturday at 9, the plane will take off. And you say, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm doing this because I enjoy freedom and appointments and classes and rules and regulations. That's not really my style. Well, if, if you're going to jump out of the airplane, you got to know what you're doing. you gotta, you got to take the class, and you have to be here on time. I don't want to do that. But imagine if you had managed to get yourself on the airplane without taking the class, managed to just happen to show up at the right time to, to get on the plane, managed to get on the plane and not listen to any of their instructions and refuse their parachute, and you jump out of the plane. And that's not free-falling. That's just falling. And while you might feel completely uninhibited by anyone's rules or regulations, and you're not weighed down by their big, heavy backpack that they wanted you to wear, you're just free to do what you want to do and go where you want to go when you want to go. In that moment, you would not be free. You would very much be a slave to the law of gravity. And it would be your destruction. And in a world where we throw off all rules, in a world where we throw off all things that make us feel guilt or condemnation, where we say, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't like anybody telling me when or why or how. It might feel free, but it's really just falling. And it ends in destruction. So where is freedom? What well, Jesus told us. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free indeed. That's real freedom. When we know the truth, that Christ came to take the penalty and punishment for our sin. Christ came, the Son of God, to live as one of us. Not to give us commands that he is completely unrelated to, but rather to come and live as one of us, to live a life free from sin, to experience the difficulty and the challenges and the adversities, the pain and the weariness of this life. And then to lay his life down so that our sins could be forgiven and we could be free from condemnation and guilt and the punishment we deserve from breaking those rules. And that when we come to him, and we come to know his truth, he works into every aspect of our lives to bring us greater and greater freedom. That when he takes the throne of our hearts, freedom rolls down into every aspect of our lives.